chapter 10, the mole. Now we're moving into section four, where we, where we need to calculate empirical and molecular formulas. Okay, objectives for this section. Explain what is meant by the percent composition of a compound. Determine the empirical and molecular formulas for a compound for mass percent and actual mass data. Remember that percent by mass is the ratio of the mass of each element of the total mass of the compound expressed as a percent. New vocabulary, percent composition, empirical formula, molecular formula, and the main idea for this section, the molecular formula of a compound is a whole number multiple of its empirical formula. Okay, so we're going to start with percent composition. The percent by mass of any element in a compound can be found by dividing the mass of the element by the mass of the total compound and multiplying by 100. So you are going to take the mass of the element divided by the mass of the total compound times 100. So if you had 8 questions out of 10 correct, on a quiz, you would have an 80%. It's very similar to how you calculate percent composition. The percent by mass of each element in a compound is the percent composition of the compound. Percent composition of a compound can also be determined from its chemical formula. Okay, so percent by mass equals the mass of the element in one mole of the compound over the entire molar mass of the compound. So now we're looking at the percent by mass. Okay, so we're going to, if you turn to page 343 in the textbook, we're going to go through this example. What is the percent composition of phosphoric acid? So we're basically looking at the percent of each element in this compound. So we're going to break it down to hydrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is do the percent by mass of the entire compound. So we know we have three hydrogens, so we have three moles of hydrogen, and then we're going to use the moles to grams ratio that we've been using. So we know that hydrogen has a mass of 1.01 .01 grams per mole. Okay, so we know that we can multiply that through actually multiply that through and we get 3.03 grams of hydrogen. Now we're looking at phosphorus. We, we know we only have one atom, so it is one mole and this is the mass of the phosphorus. Multiply that through and we get 30.97 grams of P. We know oxygen. We know there are four atoms, so we have four moles of atoms and we multiply that through and we get a total of 64.0 grams of oxygen in this entire compound. We know the entire molar mass is 98 grams per mole. So now we can figure out what percentage hydrogen is of this total, what percentage phosphorus is of this total, what percentage, percentage oxygen is of this total. So we take hydrogen over the total times 100 and that gives us 3.09 percent. We need to take phosphorus, this is our total for our phosphorus atom over the total and we get 31.6 percent phosphorus. Um, we do the same for oxygen, 64 grams over the total, 98 grams, we get 65.31 percent oxygen. So we can break that down. Hydrogen is 3 percent, Phosphorus is basically 32%, and oxygen is 65%. These percents all need to add up to 100. Next, we're going to look at empirical formula. The empirical formula for a compound is the smallest whole number mole ratio of the elements in that compound. 
you can calculate the empirical formula from the percent by mass by assuming that you have 100 grams of the compound. Then you can convert each of those masses, each of those, convert the mass of each element to moles. The empirical formula may or may not be the same as the molecular formula. So the molecular formula for hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. The empirical formula, however, is HO because notice you can reduce, you can drop these twos off to reduce it down to its smallest form. Okay, so here's an example from page 345, number 58. Okay, so we have the percent by mass. They've already calculated this for us. That's what's given in the problem. So now what we need to do is remember to assume that this is out of 100. Okay, so we are going to take this percentage and say that we have 63.16 grams of oxygen. Now we're going to use our grams to moles ratio and calculate that out. So we have 3.9475 moles of carbon. Okay, we're going to do the same for nitrogen, 36.84 grams of nitrogen from our percentage up here. And we're going to multi or actually divide this one through and find out that we have 2.6301 moles of nitrogen. Okay, we take those, figure out which one is the lowest, and then do um, a ratio. So we know that the nitrogen is the lowest, so we put that on the bottom. So we take the oxygen divided by the nitrogen, and that gives us 1.50 moles of oxygen. And then we do the nitrogen. We know the nitrogen into nitrogen is going to give us one mole. So right now we have one mole of nitrogen to 1.5 moles of oxygen. However, when we do empirical formulas, you can't, we need to have whole numbers. We can't have decimals. So if we take everything by two, 2 times 1.5 moles of oxygen gives us 3 moles of oxygen. 2 times 1 mole of nitrogen gives us 2 moles of nitrogen. Our empirical formula for this problem is going to be N2O3. Now we can't reduce this down anymore, so this is what we have for our empirical formula. Now we move into molecular formula. This specifies the actual number of atoms in each element in one molecule or formula unit of the substance. Molecular formula is always a whole number multiple of the empirical formula. Okay, here is an example. So page 350, number 62. So in this problem, it tells us that we have 49.98 grams of carbon, and we have 10.47 grams of hydrogen. We know the entire molecular mass of this compound is 58.12 grams per mole. We need to determine the molecular formula. Okay. So we know we have this many grams. We know we have this many grams, so we need to use our mole mass ratio to convert out how many moles we have. So we have 4.16 moles of carbon. Okay, we know we have 10.47 grams of hydrogen. It's given in the problem. We need to do our mole mass ratio to find out our moles. 10.39 moles of hydrogen. Now, once again, we need to find our ratios using the lowest one. Okay, we, from, by doing that, we know we have 2.50 moles of hydrogen and one mole of carbon. So that will give you the empirical formula. What do you think the empirical formula for that will be? Okay. If you have questions, come ask me about that one in class. Okay. This is a nice little chart that will help you through what you're trying to calculate. Okay, so it, you look for what you're given and, and what you're asked to find. And it tells you step by step by step what you need to do.
Okay, so let's try this one. What is the empirical formula for the compound C6H12O6? Okay, which is the empirical formula for hydrogen peroxide? Remember, because you can reduce it down. Empirical formula, you need to reduce down as much as you can. Okay, once again, this is a task that you're just going to have to do practice problems with and practice, practice, practice till you really get comfortable with it. If you have questions, please ask. 